Point of View is sponsored by Castlegate Estate Company Limited, the nation's number one service plot specialist. Good evening. This is the Point of View. We're live on City TV every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. Point of View tries to zero in on the right issues. We bring the right guests, ask the relevant questions, and come up with some useful insights. And today is the first day of April, and there's a big question on the table: Is Dumso back? Well, we've had various answers from various viewers, and we're going to try and get some expert views on the subject. When we come back. I'll tell you more about who we'll be speaking to and what questions we'll be asking. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. So this is not the first time we're asking this question. A couple of months ago, we did ask the same question and we got varied answers. But... Today we are told that there are challenges with gas supply and that the matter will be resolved in 12 days. I'm going to take you back into February where Energy Minister John Peter Mewu spoke to City News' Bobby Ose explaining what he understood of the challenges with the power sector. Later on, I'll bring some guests in from the Africa Centre for Energy Policy, from the Ministry of Power and also from other uh, CSOs to plow through the murky waters of Dumso. So this is John Peter Amewu. Intermittent power sh uh, shortfall sometimes in some areas are due to some technical issues, even within the supply end. Uh, some people within an enclave, there could be uh, a transformer problem within that area. That has nothing to do with this uh, large-scale uh, problems that we're having. Those... Uh, uh, differences, of course, are more of uh, issues that have to do with within your domain. Those will be dealt with. That has nothing to do with what we, we see in across the country. So those may come. Those are technical issues that you may see once in a while. Don't forget, Ghana, most of our uh, uh, equipment, of course, uh, still the conventional equipment. Some of them are old. They are trying to change uh, a lot of them. So the, this experience is, um, uh, we may witness it in some minor areas. This is a work that everybody needs to make sure that we, we, we keep, you know, it's a whole value chain. And I am as the minister responsible. It's my sole obligation to make sure that we have the lights on. And that is precisely what I do every day when I wake up. You know, I have to make sure that this light is on. And for us as government, uh, we, we're doing everything possible. Well, uh, I want to use this opportunity on behalf of the ministry, my agencies, all to apologize uh, to the uh, the, our cherished, you know, uh, consumers and our clients for the 48 hour and interrupted nature of power that they have witnessed. Uh, we're giving them assurance that, you know, uh, plans are far uh, advanced to address uh, some of those difficulties. You've seen it for yourself. What work is even been done now, it's going to be an improvement, like the, uh, the, the, the towers that we, we've seen being erected, you know, to move up to the 330 kV. It's all to make sure that we augment the current supply. So this activity, of course, uh, is what is affecting, you know, the current uh, uh, delivery processes. So um, we are apologizing to them. I mean, it, 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 will be, it will be okay. Uh, power is key. And so anybody that is out of power, we know how... Uh, important it is to, to, to them. So we're making sure they enjoy their interrupted supply of electricity. How far advanced in terms of the relocation of the car power, you know, um, uh, yeah, we're looking at July, you know, as everybody is aware. Maybe at an appropriate time we can find time to see what is being done now. But uh, uh, at the transmission lines in terms of the towers, about 90% of them has already been completed. Uh, they've started the, the, the excavations for uh, the pipeline. Uh, we have some small problem with the naval base in terms of uh, getting some access to work. That has it, it's, it, we're trying to address that, you know, through the, the Minister of Defence, you know, to facilitate the process uh, for us to, to have it done. So, uh, work is in progress for the relocation of car, uh, the car power. So that was the Minister for Energy, John Peter Amel. So we're going to do a quick wrap-up video. So I'm going to show you quickly. 
a, a brief press conference today. So the Deputy Minister for Energy, Oreku Edu, is in charge of power, held a press conference. I don't think they asked more than three questions at that press conference. So after the press conference, they drove journalists to Tor to go and talk to Tor officials about the plans to bring in heavy fuel oil to run some of these plants. And then they also had people from Gridco and other agencies assuring the media. They even had the Ghana Gas CEO there as well. So I'm going to give you a quick wrap-up of what government has been saying today about the situation with the power sector. The latest assurance comes at a time where most parts of the country are saddled with intermittent power supply. Consumers of electricity had high expectations upon the takeover of the management of power distribution by Power Distribution Services, PDS. But the cuts in power supply over the past two months have led many to wonder whether the country has returned to an era of load shedding or doomsaw as it is popularly referred to. At a media briefing to update the public on the latest distortion to gas supply to some power generation plants, the CEO of the Ghana Gas Company, Dr. Benasanti, stated that the connection of gas pipelines from the western part of the country to the eastern part should bring the situation under control within the next 12 days. The 10 to 12 days are needed basically for effective interconnection with the West African Gas Pipeline. And again, it's not just connecting two pieces of pipe. There are a lot of works that needed to be done there. And I did mention that even before you are able to weld two pieces of pipe together, so to speak, you have to make sure that your entire system is depressurized and then inerted. Inerted, of course, will mean that there is no flammable gas in the environs. Because if there's an ignition source, you have the whole place going up. So all those will have to be done before you actually do that. Now, when that is completed, the exciting news for all Ghanaians is that you're going to have the benefit of about 330 million scarves compared to what we're dealing with now, which is shy of just about maybe 120. How do you, you get it? Yes. Yeah. So you're going to have the benefit of 330 million scarves coming from both the OCTP fields and also the Jubilee and 10. Now, that to me, and, and, and certainly, instead of all that being resident just in the western region, now with that interconnection, you can do reverse transport of the gas from the west, which is the Takradi Enclave, to the Tama Enclave. Earlier, Energy Minister John Peter Amewu attributed the cut in power supply to some challenges faced by the Ghana Grid Company, Gridco, due to some construction works at Pokwase. Again, the destruction of a pylon belonging to the VRA at Tema last week, Monday, compelled Mr. Amewu to blame the development on political saboteurs. You can see it. It's a sabotage. How can a civilized person do this to his or her country? I mean, this is uncalled for. But Deputy Energy Minister William Oreku Edu is assuring Ghanaians that adequate measures have been put in place to ensure the supply of alternative fuel that is diesel and crude to other power generation companies. Not um, very um, okay with um, what was happening. Now we move on to the fuel supply. We wanted, or oh, our hope as a ministry was to reduce to the barest minimum the destruction of um, uh, supply of energy to the good people of this country. And we were hoping that you wouldn't even know that this work was going on. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, we've gotten to where we are. Somebody may ask, did you make any provision for alternative fuel? And the answer is yes, and it's a big yes. As you are aware, Takrade, most of the generators in Takrade use gas. And that gas, which hitherto would have gone to Tema, were all redirected to Takrade. But we are not getting nearly enough gas to power the Tapco and uh, Ameri um, plants there. So that is really where the huge challenge is. A visit by journalists to the Tema oil refinery tour on Monday confirmed the delivery of diesel and heavy fuel at the facility for onward distribution to Vinari and AXA respectively. We've received 10,500 metric tons of agu 
that uh, uh, diesel. And uh, this was brought in for VRA. And it was brought in by uh, Stratcon and Go Energy, uh, two of our uh, BDCs. Secondly, we received 11,000 metric tons of heavy fuel oil, HFO, and it's been earmarked for AXA. This was brought in by Go Energy. And then thirdly, we've received also 300,000 barrels of light crude oil. Uh, this is, it's been designated for VRA and we have it in tank. What we have done so far, we are now in the process of loading uh, BRVs, um, which are destined for AXA. We can do about a thousand uh, metric tons a day. We have um, asked uh, the NPA to give us permission to load after six o'clock. And we are prepared to work on Saturday to ensure that we can do 1,500. 6 o'clock to 10 p.m., we want that additional time, and we'll work on Saturdays, and possibly on Sundays also, to ensure that the entire stock of 10,000 uh, metric tons, um, uh, no, uh, of 11,000 metric tons, find its way to um, AXA. After bearing the brand of earlier field promises of resolving the power issues, Domestic and industrial users of electricity would have to wait for at least 12 more days before the issues are normalized. For City News, I am Pius Amihe Eduku. So that was Pius's report. In studio, I have a couple of uh, good friends. Pauline Anaman is head of policy at ASEP, the Africa Center for Energy Policy. Pauline, great to have you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I also have Pa Kwesi Anamwasichi, executive director, IES, Institute of Energy Security. Pa Kwesi, great to have you. Thank you. We'll soon be joined by uh, Nana Damo, head of Communication and Energy Ministry, to also answer questions. I want to read some of the comments we got when we posted a story earlier today. So we, there's a story we published on our website that Doomsaw is back, published load shedding timetable. Here are some of the comments we got. Uh, William Ampong, whoever says Doomsaw is back does not know what Doomsaw is or maybe is playing propaganda with it. Doomsaw isn't and will never be back. This is from William Ampon. He didn't tell us what he was writing. Citizen Shaibu Baba. Exactly. This is in response to the topic. Doomsaw is back. Publish load shedding timetable asset. He said, exactly. So that we know our level. We, those who will go back to London, will start gathering kerosene coils. Okay. Wumpini Adams. Wumpini Adams. He says, please, I am in Techiman, the capital of Bono East. And I've never experienced this doom sort thing or any light out since the beginning of the year. Or Techiman is not part of Ghana. So Wumpini in Techiman says there's been no doom so in Techiman. That's good. Uh, Kekeli Kofi Akwabli has a long one. So that was Wumpini Adam's comment on the screen. Kekeli Kofi Akwabli. They will deny it, but like pregnancy, it can't be hidden forever. They have virtually run the energy sector aground. They may not be able to hold it the way it is now or improve upon it a little. Sorry, they may be able to hold it a little now or hold it to improve a little. Then it says, Doom crowd will be inevitable unless something dramatic happens between now and early next year. And by the way, ECG was sold to themselves, fronted by the all manner of people, including a barber, reason why the former media boss was fired and fresh appointments made before processing, processes leading to the takeover. So uh, this is, uh, and he also ended by saying PDS is a facade and a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, Johnny, John T. <laughs> His comment is very funny. He says, I'm who is coming and insult you right now and say you are sabotaging Akufuadu because to him everything wrong about energy sector is sabotage. Okay. We'll talk about sabotage soon. Gershon Joby. This is beyond Doomso. Four straight days without light. This is Doomso boss. Okay, uh, let me read a few more and then I'll bring in my other guests and then do the interviews. Uh, Randolph the Baron, Randolph the Baron, experiencing Doomcraft for 22 hours. Last three days under this hot sun was just hell. 
Now it's multiple disco like doom so every day. May God bless the 53% wise men and women. I don't know what he's referring to those who voted for Akufado, but let me read this again. It says, expressing doom crowd for 22 hours last three days, and that is what sun was just hell. Now it's multiple disco like doom so every day. Maybe just a 53 wise men and women. Okay. Now I'm going to read another set of quick comments for you because, of course, the question is for the viewers to tell us what they thought. So this evening, before I came on air, they put up my poster whether Doomsaw was back. And this poster was put up an hour ago on Facebook. And somebody called Peace Chidima. He says, Bernard, I don't think you need a panel to answer this question. Doomsaw is back. So he doesn't think I need a panel. But I have a panel. So I'm going to do the panel. Now, now that I'm more head of communication, energy ministry. Now, welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you, Wes. I hope all is well. Everything is fine. And as I said, Pauline from ASEP and Parkwisi and Namasi. Pauline, your boss, uh, Ben Boache, earlier today spoke to City News. And he says, publishing a load shedding timetable is now the best thing to do. This was around 11 a.m. Actually, yes, 11 a.m. Why did he say that? Okay, Bernard. So, um, in the energy sector, in the power sector, um, there's an arrangement where if there are outages for a number of days, the PURC is required to publish load shedding, so that, I mean, a timetable, sure. so that Ghanaians would know which areas would go off, which areas would, go, would be on, so that they can plan their lives. And looking at the circumstances so far, um, there's, there's been outages for quite some days now. And this is the premise for publication of a uh, shadow. And that is the basis for demanding that this shadow should be published by um, the authorities, PRC, the Ministry of Energy, whoever is handling our power issues. So after how many days of power cuts does the PRC require that the authorities give us some sort of semblance of a shadow? I was actually looking for that guideline before coming back. Okay. Unfortunately, I think it's around three days or so. Yeah, so once you have three days of consistent power interruption, you need to let people know what the shadow will be. Exactly. I see. Does ASEP have a definition for doing so? Do you have a working definition as an energy think tank? So we, we don't have a working definition, but if you are going by what the guidelines require, when there is consistent load shedding, then there ought to be a timetable for that. And that is what happened some time ago when the term was coined, doing so. Mm. And we are seeing similar instances this time around. So mm. going by what the regulations require, then we can call it doing so. Okay. Pa pa see, what, what, uh, what is the view of your institute of what's been going on with the power sector? Are we in doom so? Well, I'm sure every Ghanaian will expect that we have consistent, uninterrupted flow of electricity to our homes and businesses. Better today, we don't have that. We can't guarantee that. And for that reason, um, nobody can tell us that we are not experiencing power crisis. And maybe the chi name or the Akan name will be doom so. Mm. And so it's, it's clear that we have challenges there mm. and doom so is at hand. I'm sure probably we'll, they will talk about the degree of doom so, but its intensity and frequency, uh, its intensity is nothing to, to question about. We've seen the frequency. It didn't start today, all the way from November, December last year. Last three weeks we did experience some, and this time around it tells you that consistently we've been having challenges with the supply of electricity. So as far as you are concerned, whatever name we give it, we have doom so. Bernard, you can describe it as doom crow. It is we have a challenge. It's doom so. Let okay. me just end no, 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 not that much. what is government's official description of what is going on? Okay, thank you very much. I think that what is happening here on this panel is symptomatic of the general lack of uh, clarity that a lot of people have. And I think that um, as a ministry, we need to, you know, do a lot more, which is also why I've taken this opportunity to be here. And I want to thank you very much for availing uh, this platform to us. Critically, what you would realize all my other panelists have said is that we are having challenges in the system. Mm. We are not able to uh, definitively say that this is doomed so otherwise. I've heard 
a play on the semantics of it. And I agree that, well, yes, um, the semantics of it in with the lack of a proper definition mm -hmm. for, for, for Dumso, a working definition for Dumso, you may have some semantics at play here. Mm -hmm. What I understand it to be is not what we are seeing. But I like the fact that it has also been admitted that what we are looking at has or is similar to so, but then it goes back to the question of similar and same. Are they similar or the same? So it's, it's, it's all a play that, that, that we have to look at. But from the point of view of government, mm. we have admitted clearly mm. that we've had challenges with the you know, power situation in this country. Mm. We, are, we are not shying away from that. Secondly, it is also worth noting that over the last 20 days, actually, mm -hmm. uh, gas infrastructure in this country has undergone a partial shutdown. Okay. Now... With the partial shutdown, majority of the people didn't even notice at all that there were works ongoing because mm. we managed the situation, we managed it very well. Unfortunately, we've had a slip in the supply of fuel along the value chain mm. because there were some processes that have delayed and that is what has led to the current situation that we are seeing and which has also led that in along the tenets of good governance and also along the tenets of transparency, among other things, we need to step in front of the problem mm. and let the people of Ghana understand clearly that this is what is happening and this is what we are dealing with it. What is happening? Yes, we've had some challenges with fuel supply. And let me explain that when I say we've had challenges with fuel supply, mm -hmm. I am not saying that we are unable to buy fuel. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that we've had logistical challenges with the supply of the fuel. Not that we haven't been able to buy it. Anybody who understands knows that we buy it on the spot. And so after, you know, when it's done like that with the spot buying and all of that, mm -hmm. there are some things that have to be done in floaters coming in and checking the various volumes and all of that. Mm -hmm. And there have been some delays along that value chain, which has caused this. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, honestly. And it shouldn't have happened. And So logistical sub challenges with supply, nothing to do with funds. No, I mean today. Meaning that you have the, the fuel, but you can't move it. No. Oh. I'm saying that, you know, in, when you buy the fuel, it, you, you buy it from the international market. It comes into the country. Mm -hmm. There's some, there are even some, I've forgotten the exact plant, and I wish I, I'll be able to give that to you before tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. But there's some particular, there's a plant that we need to treat the fuel a little bit before it goes into the plant. So all of these challenges are what has come up. What I'm trying to say is that today we were bold enough to take the journalists and a few of your colleagues, I believe, were also there mm -hmm. to go and see uh, the discharge of fuel and the tracking of the fuel from Tema Oil Refinery to AXA, mm -hmm. the AXA plant in particular. We've also had the CEO of Great Co, uh, sorry, of VRA also tell them that, yes, we've had um, some issues, but they have enough fuel to ensure that we are able to power uh, the necessary plants. But... All that being the same, from Saturday till now, um, we've had quite relevant uh, challenges, challenges in the system, though we've made very significant progress. The minority held a press conference today, and former Minister for Energy, Alma Kofibua, said, you are having financial problems because you mismanage the energy sector fund. So his point was that this was actually financial mismanagement leading to lack of fuel. I can understand why he would want to make political capital out of this because, you know, yeah, power in its situations is, is always a fertile ground for people to seek to make some political gains out of this. But I would have been very happy if he was able to point out what it is. Let's not also seek to create the impression, therefore, that by saying what I have just said, uh, government is denying that there are some financial challenges in the energy sector. You would, and I believe my panelists will also agree with me that we have had challenges financially in the energy sector for a long time, which is why we have called it a legacy debt situation that we have. And it's there. Nobody will run away from it. But to seek to assert that that is the cause of the current problem is... is, is so it's not financial? No, it's not financial. I'll come back after this break to uh, take you across the country for a few views. So we are not just sitting here doing a discussion. We have views from Kumasi. We have views from... Uh, the northern region and views from parts of Accra on the situation. When we come back, we also have our guests addressing what the causes are. So they are saying it's a supply logistics issue. Do my other panelists agree? Stay tuned.
Living among your peers in a serene gated community with tarred roads, drains, electricity, piped water supply and 24-hour security can be so relieving. That is the experience you will enjoy when you reserve the Castle Residency Plots located near Pram Pram Beach and Katamansu near Adenta Barrier. Just pay up to 60% deposit and start construction to start enjoying Pram Pram Beach and Airport City Life. You can start with any deposit. We give you a whopping 10% discount if you make an outright payment. The Castle Residency Plots are managed by Castlegate Estate Ghana Limited. Locate our offices at Katamansu Estate Site of the Adenta Barrier Dodua Road or Pram Pram Beach Road next to Oasis International School or contact us on 0545-559928. Our website on www.castlegateestate.com.gh or email us at info at castlegateestate.com.gh. The Castle Residency Plots. We make home ownership easier. Credible, timely and authoritative. City TV offers the best news and current affairs programming every weekday. On Mondays and Wednesdays. Probing and informative. Direct and instructive. Join me, Bernard Avlet, this and every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. on The Point of View on City TV. Every weekday from 8 p.m. Get up to date with the leading news stories of the day. Your comprehensive news coverage from across the country. City Newsroom is your trusted daily news package. Every weekday, 8 p.m. on City TV. Make a date every Tuesday evening. The politicians and key personalities speak to me, Godfrey Akotobuafo, on Face to Face every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Keep updated throughout the day on 2020 News. For regular news checks, ask the unfold. Politics, sports, entertainment, business, and much more. 2020 News, we bring you the news in 20 minutes. Every weekday evening. Stay updated on the key business issues of the day with me, Obi Osei, on the business dashboard every weekday at 7 p.m. Friday evenings. My name is Caleb Kuda. I host a show that turns the news on its head. Join me this and every Friday on Backpage at 6.30 p.m. Comprehensive and trusted news and current affairs programming. This is CTTV. So the comments are pouring in. This is the point of view. We're trying to understand where we are with our power sector. The question on the table is Doom Sobak and my guests are Parkwisi Anamwasechi, IES Pauline Anaman from ASEP, and Nana Damwa, who is the head of communication for the Ministry of Communication. Lots of comments. Courage Livingston says, Bernard, Adenta, our lights are off. Instead of Amewu to admit that Doom Sobak is back, they are just playing politics with our lights. Apia Menka says, to me, Doomso is back, but this government doesn't want to accept the fact. But Ghanaians are experiencing Doomso throughout the country. Victor Arnon says, I'm watching live on Facebook as a result of Doom Doom at Adenta. Sefasa J says, put party colors aside and tell us the truth so we can plan our lives and our activities well. LJ says, our power has been off almost every day since last week, even yesterday and today. Hope L says, today in Keta, it was not easy for us at all. On, off, on, off. We need a lasting solution to this problem. Let me take you to Kumasi. Our Shanti Regional uh, Bureau Chief spoke to some business people about the situation with power. He came through this report. For the past few weeks, some parts of the country have been experiencing power outages. Some electricity consumers have called for a schedule to be released to enable them to plan ahead of time. Some residents and business operators in Kumasi who are not exempted are worried about the situation. They want managers of the power sector to rectify the problem. I'm doing like painting, photography. I'm using the light for a work. But if the light is out, it's affecting me to the end of the day to aim the business what uh, the person wants you know. I can't I will not able to get the money for the person so it's affecting us so we need the government to do something about the light for us mm, concerning that one it has affected us a lot that's because uh, when you come from home you'll be sitting here there is no light to work on the students their laptops for them to learn so right now no, I, I think um, something should be done quickly you know, for us so that we can start business and then um, we all will benefit from it. So that's it. 
Okay, so it's very sad and appalling that we are in this time of crisis by this time of the year. But there's only one thing I have to say. As someone who deals with machinery, the light is really a problem for me. If there's only one thing I'll plead for right now, I'll just request, if the Doomsaw is back, they should just give us a timetable so that some of us will know how to work with. Because indeed, productivity has been on a very low pace for us and we don't know what to do. And they have not declared the Doomsaw for us. So we are just leading, we are just pleading with them that they should just do their best to just tell us what is going on and declare a timetable for us. Thank you. Now, some individuals and companies have started procuring backup power supplies. So the question is, when will this issue of intermittent power supply end? For City News, Edward Opon Marfo. So that was Edward Opon Marfo. He's our Ashanti Regional Bureau Chief. Let me take you to Bimbila, where our northeast, actually our Eastern Corridor correspondent, Mohamed Aminu Alabira, also came through this report. As you can see, I'm, feeling, I'm sweating as I'm sitting down because of the light up. I can't sit in my room. Can't do anything. Uh, water is life. Like I said, water is life. No pure water for us. The water is still warm. We can't use it. The weather is warm. We can't sit in rooms and to do our private things. And for about three days now, in Bimbla town, we don't have electricity, and it's affecting our businesses. I'm a mobile money vendor. All my phones have gone off. I haven't been able to charge them since uh, yesterday and it's affecting my business. I have a friend who is also a tailor. Since yesterday, he hasn't been operating because of uh, uh, the lighting situation. Our phones have gone off. We have been cut off from the internet. We are just cut off from the rest of the country. I'm a merchant for mobile money. I work for MTN in my own regard. And for the fact that uh, we don't have lights, we are unable to do transactions, which is affecting us adversely. Besides that, uh, most people have complained of their gadgets being destroyed by the counter, uh, constant power outages. Whoever is responsible for getting this issue fixed should sit up. If it is NEDCO or any other players in the power industry, we call on them to uh, attend to this issue swiftly so that normalcy can be restored and we have the life to do our daily business. So we showed you those two videos so you know this is not just an Accra issue. So the people of Kumasi complaining, those in Bimbla as well. So Park, we see, what are your quick thoughts on what Nana is saying that these are logistical challenges with supply? He says it's not a money issue. Is this what your research tells you from your IES? Well, for many years, um, politicians have never admitted when it comes to that issue mm. that's financial. Right from 2014-2015, you ask and they say, oh, it's not a money issue. And today we hear the same. It is true. There are also technical, some technical issues. You mm -hmm. know, like you said, Atuabo uh, was shut down Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so it means that the Western Corridor especially, though there are some liquid fuels there, um, they need to switch from the natural gas, the plant that will run on natural gas, because for many years they've been running on natural gas. And so when they have to switch on from the natural gas to the liquid fuel, they mm -hmm. had some challenges to the extent that some of the plants even went down. Mm -hmm. Again, we get an indication that the gas coming from Nigeria it's not enough. Okay. And so it's been redirected to Ameri. And as of this morning, we check Ameri was run on five units. Maybe mm. this evening it has improved. It also tells you that they won't be able to do much. Then we come to the Eastern Corridor. Mm. We realized that Kappa was working this morning. AXA was also working. Mm. But they were not working at full throttle because our understanding is that the fuel they have in stock is not much. And so if they run full throttle, they are likely to run out and shut down even from now. Mm. And so they have to reduce that. That's some of these challenges. But you can't tell me that procuring the fuel can just be logistical. Mm. It has some dimension of financial issues there. We are certain. You remember, then, uh, uh, Ben, that in August, September last year, when the issue of ECG owing Greco came up, we did indicate that for that reason, Dumso could resurface mm -hmm. because the power sector is oiled by the cash flow. Okay. If you have it, you can do a lot. 
In fact, you can reinforce both your transmission and distribution system. You can make available alternative fuel mm. at the right time. Why have we asked for Nigeria to give us beyond eight, uh, 60 million scarf and they are giving below 40? Do we owe them or not? It's something that could help us with. And so if you have money, you could have it sitting in there. This is the first time I'm hearing that Go Energy is giving us fuel for our power plant. This is the first time. Go Energy. Go Energy. This is the first time I'm hearing that Stratcon, an unknown oil trading company, giving us light crude oil for the first time. And one we want to ask, where are the usual suppliers? What has changed? If we're able to meet our obligations for them, wouldn't they have brought it? We get indication that even what Go Energy is giving us is meant for the local market mm. at the pump. And so they have to redirect some okay. to this point. And Nana and his team cannot tell us that there is no financial challenge in the energy sector. So that's why the denial, you, you believe to be true that there is a financial dimension to this? They have denied for many years and they will keep on denying. But, you know, when the base is not right, mm. you'll be exposed at well, a point. Pauline, does ASEP also think it's a financial issue? Yes, we honestly think it's a financial issue. Now, as Nana was speaking, I was just wondering, when did this procurement happen? Because if we know when the procurement happened, then we can move on with the discussion. This is an energy sector that has been de uh, bedeviled with a lot of financial challenges. We've had plants, we have a lot of capacity installed. Mm -hmm. That's about 4420 megawatts. Mm -hmm. And we have dependable capacity of 3,877. Okay. But as of today, um, Grid Coast uh, forecast for, forecast for um, uh, demand, peak demand was 2,600. And mm. in the morning, the supply actually was around 1,765, which is about 45% of what the, the dependable capacity So we are, we are producing way below capacity. We are producing way below capacity and way below peak demand. That is one thing. Now, the other issue is, amidst all of these things, we understand the ministry's perspective. They are doing an interconnectivity uh, from the west to the east, mm -hmm. which is great for the country. But from where we sit as, at ASEP, we believe that this, all of this could have happened without all this doom so that we are experiencing. So if governments knew that we were going to do this interconnectivity, the, and they knew also that we had plans that could run on fuel, then procurement, whatever it is, should have started a long time ago. So it goes back to my question, when did this procurement begin? And how long have these challenges been going on? Because if we were serious as a country and we knew that we had to procure fuel, then the eastern, the thermal plants in, on the east could have produced the power at full capacity and wouldn't be facing any issue. Because as of this morning, we had about 835 megawatts outstanding, right? But then the, the, the plants in the east, if they had produced at full capacity, would have taken... 765 megawatts out of the 835 and mm. we'll be dealing with just 70. So when did this fuel procurement begin? Mm. We need the timelines, then we can move forward with the discussion. These are interesting questions. And, and, and I'm very happy to see a very healthy skepticism going on. I mean, it's, 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 very, it's very rewarding to know that for a country that you know, accommodated about four years of doing so, um, now we've gotten, we've the entire perspective of that, we've gone past it, and so now even a single hour or power outage is unacceptable. That's a very great thing that has happened. But to deal with the issues, you can see that as, as we, the discussion has progressed, it has moved from statement of facts to questions that are, being, that are coming from my co-panelists. And I'm very happy to engage in attempting to answer all of these questions. No, these are questions born based out of skepticism. Yeah. Born out I of agree. facts. And that's why I said yeah, they, are they, are saying, they, are, they are They are based on facts. Yeah, they are saying so, so let's, let's, let's make it easy. For example, Park right. said, you are getting less than f the amount of uh, gas you needed from Nigeria. They, you wanted 60, they are giving you less than 40. Yes. And he suspects that maybe there are payment issues there. I'd want to ask Park Have you paid the Nigerians all that, the, we, that all we owe them? The context is, is very critical. Has Nigeria ever given us the full capacity of 
gas since we started op operating the WACP? That's the answer is no. But why? From the very beginning, no, from the very beginning, they didn't start out, even from the inception where we did not owe them, they were not giving us the full quantum of what we needed. So it tells it us that true. the moment you mean, owe them, it will become worse. Well, but the, this evidence, will find ourselves. the evidence shows that now at least we are getting about 60 to, as we speak, which tells you that it is not an issue of the debt that we owe them. Yes, when we came into power, there was a significant amount of debt that was owed WACP. On the 30th of November 2018, mm. the then managing director of the West Africa Gas Pipeline, speaking at an event at the Marriott Hotel, uh, committee of ministers meeting in, 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 in Ghana, which agreed upon the basis of the tariffs that was going to be used in the reverse flow uh, that, that is being completed currently. He stated clearly that more than 50% of the legacy debt that was met has been paid. Now, I'm not disputing the fact that as we speak, there are debts in the energy sector. I will not do that because that will be telling bold-faced lies. But what I am saying is that Considering, for instance, the situation or the scenario that he gave, that if they are given 40, then it is because there is a debt that is owed. That cannot be the case. Yes, there is a debt. It's an ongoing concern. It's like mm. you and your bank. Mm. You can ask for an overdraft. You may owe them, but it's still an ongoing concern. So far as you are trying to service the debt and you are, you are seen to be generally being, being in good standing, we can still have those ongoing concerns. Mm. I again understand, and I need to repeat this for them to give them some assurance, that yes, the, the skepticism is healthy. Particularly looking at the track record of, of governments over the years, I, I, I can understand that civil society will seek to take the positions that they are taking, that there's a skepticism for government among other things. But I'm telling you that we are more transparent than you can think we have been. And today, for example, we took them, we said, yes, we have full stocks. And we didn't just sit and tell you that we have full stocks. We actually took them to go and see that, yes, the fuel, the heavy fuel oil that we're talking about is actually being loaded tomorrow. By the grace of God, we'll take them to Takradi as well for them to also go and have... So let me understand what you're doing. You are migrating <laughs> the direction of our gas flow, which used to be from east to west, west. to Atuabu, west to east. I, you want the, the, the gas to flow from where it is in the western corridor to power our plants this way, not the other way around. That's one. No. We actually want the two to run concurrently. Then this is what I mean. The West Africa gas pipeline is set up such that gas moves from Nigeria to as a East present. to West. Yes, east to west. Now we also have gas. At the point where the entire framework for the West Africa gas pipeline was being set up, Ghana had not discovered oil and gas. So we we didn't think about being able to have a reverse flow of gas. Now we have. There is a lot of gas that is always stranded in, in, in Takradi. Okay. Now, we have so, plants like Sonona Soglis, Aksa and Co. that need... And these plants are in the east. And they are in the east. And sometimes when the Nigerians are not giving us... We can't send the we gas need, we have we in the west We also can't to send the gas that we okay. have in the west for them. You may remember that a story came up recently about Ghana paying $40 million uh, or so. They're about for, for, for gas mm -hmm. that we are not using. Among. That was the cause. That may not necessarily be the quantum, but that was the cause of it. With this time process that we are trying to do, what it would do is that at least the amount of money, the quantum of money that we are paying for gas that we are not using will be reduced drastically. And this is our own gas, we will utilize it. So in principle, I don't think that anybody would, would question what is being done. Actually, it's a delayed pr uh, project. It's taking quite a while to get to this fine. We believe that it, it should have been done earlier than where we're doing it now. So if I'm getting you right, from what they said at press conference, this process of making sure we can move gas from west to east will take two weeks. The, the, what is being installed? So what is being done is called a tie-in. West Africa, uh, the West Africa gas pipeline has its own infrastructure already set up. The Ghana gas also have their own infrastructure already set up. We've done a bypass and all of that, but we need to be able to tie in the two systems which have been developed independent of each other so that we can have that flow. So that includes metering systems and all valves and all of those things being put in place. And that will take how long? And you see, I have also said here that we've had a partial shutdown of the infrastructure for the last 20 days. Caused by what? No, because we're going to do the tying, there are some preparatory works that you need to do before you do a complete shutdown. With a complete shutdown, it means no gas whatsoever is flowing through the Ghana gas infrastructure. We have to depressurize it and make sure that it is inert. 
once it is in and by net i mean there's no gas within or within that immediate surroundings before the welding works and all of that can be completed once it is done then you need to gradually test the system by ramping it up over time and so still like asking the question so how long do you estimate this process to within take? 12 days, 12 days. That, yeah, which percentage of our power depends on gas because we also have some hydro we and Akusum. at every point in time it depends on the dispatch mechanism that we're using so you know that we have we, we have a Akusumbo, we have all of these other things. So at every given point in time, it depends on availability of, 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 of fuel. And fuel could be gas or or liquid fuels, be it HFO and whatever. So no, but it depends if, on if, a, a sports situation. If you ask me at a sport, then I'll be... Because I'm told to sports, uh, peak demand is 2,600. Yes. 2,690. So and how much is there? When Akusumbo is running at full capacity, how much are we supposed to get from there? I would have to over check the figures. Over 800. Yes, over 800. Yeah. And then Bui is supposed to be a picking plant, which is about 300. Yes. Yeah. So unless you're telling me that now, majority of our power is from thermal and gas-powered sources. Actually, that's true. So Akosombo and Bui, and then the 2 megawatts uh, like, solar uh, cannot give us 50%. No. no, no, no. So that, that's the fact. Yeah, yes. that's the fact. Um, thermal is nearly 60% of the supply. But that's strangely... For the past five months, hydro has been doing more than 50% on the average for the past five months. And there are records to show just that we are drafting the water. So this time around, they are, you know, choosing to uh, so manage it. Even before, not to this, before this, this tie-in, it started, it started hydro was November. giving us the on the average, more from than November. 50 percent. Yes, uh, we those, have records to show. You have records to show? Yes, of course. Those are things that we can debate about. Whether no, but is that true or not? Well, and I'm telling you that, I mean, he's saying he has records to show, and I'd want to see those records. So we can, and that's why I'm saying that those are things so we what, can what's debate the about. The reality of it is that, you see, where we have gotten to us at now, I don't think that anybody can challenge the fact that we've had challenges in the power the power uh, system in this country. Nobody can do no, that. No, but the explanation but, you are giving Bernard, is on is the basis of a a project which yeah. you're saying that you're going to have done in 12 days but if you're saying that from november then it means that this is much deeper than he says he has records to show so let him bring it and then we'll see, see for just it. um 29 is it uh january so i'm, I'm going to forward to my my my, my producer to <laughs> to put on the screen if i can yes, see that's february yeah. okay all right, so yes, yes, go so on. So he says from November, and again, I'd want to put on record. I will I go to, to the see, November as well. Thank you. I want to see those records so that we can look at thank them. Thank you. But I, I'll be very surprised if you'll be able to find those records for you. The other thing I'm saying is that we are saying that the current situation we are in, thank you, the current situation we are in, as you can see, is clearly uh, explained by the diagram that you have there. We are saying that there's a reason that is the why to allow for the final time or the reverse flow of gas. The essence of it is that the Sankofa gas, which is in the west, will be moved today. The cost of the delay is that for every single day that we do not do this, it was going to cost this country $400,000. And then the timeline is scheduled for it to last about 12 days. Interestingly, the four stocks have also been listed there, about uh, 10,500 metric tons of diesel for VRA, 11,000 metric tons of HFO for AXA, and about 300,000 barrels of LCO for VRA as well. All of these are currently in tank, available at the Tema Oil Refinery. So mm. the issue of fuel and its, and its limitations are more So this was issued be, today. Yes, the current today. situation is not due to lack of money or fuel as there is sufficient fuel to power generating plants right, at all. Yes. And then you're saying maintenance schedule to last for 12 days. Yes. So by 13th April, four days to Easter, all the power outages should be over. Clearly. This is correct. Clearly. So would you come back here on 14th April to come in? I can make a promise. You call me anytime. You know, today you just called me a few hours and I'm here. You are here? Yes. I'm trying to put up a uh, power quiz's document that is claiming. And, and, and as I've sent it to six to so check it. And I have that of December. So your, well. your point is that even before this whole process began, hydro from Akosombo was the main mean. Hydro from Akosombo and Pong was the main. And this is so for December. Then... Yeah, I have, uh, Anas, please, I've asked six to yes. It's on six to Put it on the screen. The screen. So the date, I mean, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show it on the screen when, when, yes. I, when, so when I do. Let me send you, sisters. I yes. Send it to him. So whilst we're on it, good evening, Bernard. Please, Doomstar is really back. Our light goes off every morning here in Poon. They should just admit it and give us the timetable so we schedule our movement. Good evening, Bernard. If Mr. Mewu says power is key, 
then they should give us the lock, the key to unlock the productivity. <laughs> but quick question. Why don't, why don't you give us a schedule then? Now that you're saying it's going to come back in 12 days, which means that you definitely are shedding load. What prevents you from giving us a schedule? Um, the difficulties with, with the giving of a schedule are a lot. And the issue is that we are stressing on the fact that this is intermittent in nature. As I've seen the very statistics that they've given you this morning. As of this morning, AXA, if you'd refer to her figures, for instance, she'd tell you what AXA was doing, mm. what car power she was doing. And I can tell you that as we speak, car power is doing about 430 megawatts. So if we are told you today, for instance, that based on the projections that were coming in during the day, we are expecting to shed load in, in several areas. We would have been untruthful to you along these measures. It is due to the intermittent nature of it. So you can't even know. That's not what we are saying. We are not saying that we cannot even know. What we are saying is that, for example, this morning it was pretty bad, but then as we are speaking now, it's gone up. And we, we expect that it will remain where it is. And if it gets to those levels, then there's, there's no point. That is why. Mm. If it pertains as it is, we would have no option. But as it stands, it's not necessary at the moment. I'll, I'll, I'll take another quick break. When I come back, I'll try and see if there are other issues. So there was this bizarre incident of somebody trying to cut down one of the Greek pylons, and the energy minister said that he smelt political sabotage. We'll put that sense to the test when we come back. Plus lots of your comments. Also, Park, we see evidence I'll put on the screen just to prove that he says he has that information. So all this and more coming up. Don't, don't go away. <music> Policymakers, the top personalities, the people at the center of the news. They speak on face to face, one of a kind access into the lives and the stories of our time. So these are some of the things. If you want time, as I was, as I was born in the plane, it just in the came queue, to you. just straight from. The launch to the queue, a song, a song drop. So face to face with Godfrey Akotobuafo every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Keep watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. You're tuned into Breakfast Daily on City TV. You're watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. <laughs> We spice up your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy-oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Nigerians are putting their film on Netflix now. There's DSTV, there's mobile phones, there's all sorts of um, apps that you can actually put to your phone. So distribution is not just... Um, going to the cinemas to, to, to preview or to premiere the movie we wear all our gowns and all that and then that's all. There are lots of channels that we don't know mm -hmm. and we've limited ourselves to just Ghana. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30am to 10. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the point of view. My guests are Park Wissi Anamwasechi from the IES, Pauline Anaman from ASEP, and Nana Damwa from the Ministry of Energy. Here are more of your comments. My light went off 3 p.m. yesterday till around 10 p.m. On the other hand, uh, we don't seem to talk about the frequent power fluctuations. My TV has gone off four times already since you started your program, Bernard. <laughs> wow. Good evening, Bernard. Please ask Nana Damwa if the government knew oh, that they were going to... <laughs> be a scheduled tie in during the first quarter if they knew why was there no plan to mitigate the effect felix from cape coast better do so is back they don't want to tell us the truth malam fari in kaswa but it's fine nana states exactly the challenges yet says there is a challenge what is doom 
We don't think anyone needs a government PR to tell me my light is off and on. The government talks too much. We want to see results, not lectures, Sami from Tema. Uh, good evening, Bernard. Tell the government rep to stop playing around with words and speak to the issues. Mm -hmm. If it's fuel or logistics, is it not visible to detect or foresee? This is from Medina. It's, okay, it says Medina had to a shaman, domain experience power outage yesterday for more than six hours. Derico Sandogrino. So one of the things we've heard, Nana, is this allegation that the attempt to cut a pylon is political sabotage. Is that also part of the reasons why we're having power? Um, if, if I may, let me also state that a large chunk of what we have been dealing with over the last three days mm. is that some of these thermal plants had to switch from gas to LCO. Now, even though some of them come as dual machines, it takes a bit of time. You mm. can't just say that you are operating on, on gas mm. and then you turn the switch and then you go to, 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 to LCO. It takes mm. a while to configure and make some changes. So a large portion of it is also that some of these had we're going through that process of switching. Mm. So now that we've been able to do the, the switching and then the fuel availability, we realize that there will be quite um, a lot of power available. However, let's also keep in mind that during that phase where we are, when the tying works are done and we are switching over again from, you know, from liquid fuels back to gas, we can expect that we'll have that challenge. Did you know, that know you were going to do the tying? Why no contingency now, now, plan? Now, now, this is what it is. If you have plants in the east and in the west and you know the limitations that they have you have to agree on which plants to dispatch within which period and which plants not to dispatch now Bernard, the issue is we have about a 12 day period mm. remember that all of these changes cost money so we have to make some decisions as to which plants to leave as gas and which plants to leave convert to lco within that that period because mm. if we switch everything over onto liquid fuels within that period of time with the attendant cost in just about 12 days or so we are going to have to undertake that same process again with its attendant cost then what would, it, would we have done so we have to take critical decisions as to which ones to switch and which ones not to switch so within that may i may, if i if, if I, just finish, I agree but if i'll just finish for, for the benefit of, of, of viewers mm -hmm. and remember i haven't even attempted to Answer my question answer about question. So political what, sabotage. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is that within that scope of what we are doing, we have to make some critical decisions. Bearing in mind as well that your money, my money, taxpayers' money is also being used mm. in all of these. So okay. we need to be prudent. In political the sabotage, in cutting of pylons. You see, it's a strange thing. And one of my first um, things was to ask myself, is the, am I dreaming? I see. Because I do not understand how you know, anyone would attempt to go and do what was. And I don't know if you've seen the pictures and the videos that were floating about. And I've had several explanations that some have sought to give that it was not sabotage, perhaps we should explain it as theft. But I, I think that we need to be a bit more critical of those answers. Reason is that you don't need to put down a pylon to be able to steal from the pylon. All those poles that people steal from, pole top accessories, mm, wires, mm. they don't have to dig up the poles to steal those components. What they basically do is, do is they go in there. So to government thinks somebody's trying to sabotage the other, them. The other, the other side of it is that those lines we are dealing with are 161 kV. So why would somebody cut with a hacksaw? Exactly. And, and to risk their thing, life to sabotage you. The, the you added, this is what Park Wissi was talking about. Yes. So Park Wissi, speak to this in one minute. So you realize that uh, for Which the day in question. This? January. Mm -hmm. well, this, is mm -hmm. this is from Greco. This is from Greco. So it's from Monday. government. Yeah. This is Monday, 28 January, 2019. Yeah. It tells you the power that was generated, mm -hmm. the total generation at peak, mm -hmm. uh, the Ghana peak load, because we also sub we export some and mm -hmm. all that. Let's come to the generation by fuel type, mm -hmm. and it's gigawatts uh, um, hour. Yeah. For hydro, we are doing 26.48, mm -hmm. and for thermal, 22.32. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that 26.48 is not more than 50%? So it is. And as if you put up the other date, the one. December date as well, if you have that, if you can put it up. The problem I have with this so, so No, no, please. No, no, let me finish. Oh. Yes. So <laughs> just exp yes, put the other one up Let's right now. So we wrap up. We have just in a minute. So you're but saying that clarify this. you're saying that these two pieces of data show that at least for two separate months, we're running... Not for... From November last year, we'll be relying much on hydro. But as against thermal, and you ask what has really happened when no, no, please. You see, everything you have presented here, um, I'm, I, I am unable to consume it. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. For instance, if you tell me that because we're going to change over from natural gas to uh, liquid fuel, we should have these challenges, no. then you didn't plan my well. Only, my only challenge I have with the data, the only challenge together. I have with the data uh, is that uh, hydro alone can give us more than 1,200 megawatts. Okay? He says when it comes to car power, car power doesn't use natural gas. It's used to liquid fuel, so there is no changeover. Car power can do 450, 420, 450. When you add this to 1,600 already, when you go to AXA, more than 200 megawatts. At Asogli, there are plants that just use liquid fuel and so, and not natural gas, which doesn't require any change over. You should have rather selected well and make sure that my liquid fuel are in stock. Okay, we've run yeah. out of time. Bernard, so I think it's seriously, critical. Seriously, you have One to let me say he's something. He's given us days, mm-hmm. and he said from November. So what are no, we expecting? Bernard, I can give you more than 40 days. Tell you. No, but are you denying no. what he's saying? No, all I'm saying and is... And you want any evidence for that? May I, may I, may I, may I, but I, think, I, think, I think, to be fair, this yes. is what he said. Mm-hmm. From November, yes. government has been running more than 50% hydro. Is that not true? I'm coming. I'm And that's why I said that I'll be surprised. If you'll be able to give any data to confirm what he said, because on the average, may I, may I, may I? Because what average. you said was that from November, what you have given us is a day. And listen, no, but the logistics of pushing all those things up, we but don't have. If that you day. don't have the data, no, he has it on it, his phone. But have he's it. just giving me a day, and that's what he's giving us. All right, Nana, you have the last word. Yes, the last word. I have the last word, and I want to say something here, Nana. You are here talking about data from uh, uh, the gent Parkwisi. Now you mentioned earlier that. It is less expensive for taxpayers, you know, from the government perspective. It is okay for taxpayers to suffer all these challenges for the 12 days for them, for, for government to fix the, the interconnectivity. That is, that is what I got from your session. So, then that's not necessarily what I was oh trying to say. We have to let the show That's what you got. That's your understanding. Oh, I agree so with you. So, understand. Understand. What, so my, my so point is, you have to explain put, You have to you put, explain it again. Oh, you have to put he, numbers. She, 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 this, is, this is a decision <laughs> by government. And every decision government takes must be evidence-based. And so you have evidence-based. So if you want me to explain, if, if I will explain saying, it to you. If you are saying switching will cause some hitches and yes. here and there, you are essentially saying the cost of switching is higher than the cost consumers are suffering now. That's what we are saying. what are you saying? Because that's what I'm saying. The program is over. Thank you. Uh, I'm really yeah, sorry about this, but uh, Nana Damoa from Ministry of Energy, Pauline Anaman from Africa Center for Energy Policy, and Pakwisi Anaman City from the Institute of Energy Security. Thank you for watching. My name is Bernard Avile, and please sleep well. Good night. <laughs>